Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. We will get started in just a minute. We'll give folks another minute to log on. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this important webinar today. I am Jose Sogard, uh, Deputy Director for the Office of Nightlife. For those of you who don't know, we are a liaison between the city and the nightlife industry of businesses, workers, performers, and patrons. We work to support the nightlife community, navigating city bureaucracy, improve quality of life, promote safety and harm reduction, and elevate nightlife culture. If you have any issues or questions, please, as always, feel free to reach out to us at nightlife at media.nyc.gov. Today's webinar is part of a new series of courses we created called Night School, or Nightlife Industry Training and Education, which are held both virtually and in person. <clears throat> this is a series to share resources and trainings for owners, workers, and patrons addressing how to best engage with city agencies uh, when involved in the nightlife community. Uh, that includes learning tips for proactive harm reduction, addressing quality of life issues, and several other topics. You can find out more information at nyc.gov slash night school. That's N-I-T-E school, and we will put a link in the chat. Today, we're happy to share with you the second in a series of financial management resources and services and workplace protections from the Department of Consumer and Worker Protections Office of Labor Policy and Standards. We know that uh, for so many New Yorkers working and performing in nightlife, it can be really challenging to find time to make sure you're taking advantage of all the rights and resources you have available to you. So we're excited today to connect you with our partners at DCWP who will give an overview of the rules, regulations, and laws designed to improve working conditions uh, that they help to enforce. And in case you missed uh, the earlier session uh, that we co-hosted with DCWP, uh, we'll also share a link to that recording with information about free one-on-one -on -one professional financial counseling services and some tools and tips that can help you get started with managing your finances as a nightlife worker. Uh, before I introduce my colleague to conduct the training, just want to uh, note some uh, housekeeping items very quickly. Uh, if you have questions for us, please use the Q&A feature in the Zoom uh, throughout the meeting. And after the presentation, we will have some additional time for Q&A as well. Um, the note, uh, note that the meeting is being recorded and live streamed to Facebook, and a recording will be available to share with your colleagues or other staff uh, who would like to view the training at another time. Again, you can also visit nyc.gov slash night school, that's N-I-T-E school, to find information on future scheduled trainings and webinars that are part of this series. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my colleague from DCWP. Uh, Ed Chen is the Senior Community Affairs Associate. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Ed, and the floor is yours. Thanks for that introduction, Jose. Um, I'm just going to start off by sharing my screen. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being uh, here today um, and joining us for this presentation uh, regarding uh, workplace protections. Um, so there are going to be a few that uh, we'll be covering today, but um, well, I just want to highlight that uh, as a disclaimer that, that this, um, what I'm sharing today will uh, only be informational uh, for informational purposes and um, would not constitute as legal advice, but um, we're happy to assist you with any questions that you may have or concerns um, uh, dealing with uh, workplace rights. So let me uh, 
introduce my agency. So um, the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, formerly known as the Department of Consumer Affairs, um, it's our mission to protect and enhance the daily economic lives of New Yorkers to create thriving communities. And what that specifically means, um, as a city agency, uh, part of our responsibilities is to license businesses. So we license more than 59,000 businesses, such as your car washes, uh, tobacco shops, or used car dealerships. We also enforce workplace rights, like your right to sick, uh, take a sick day and not be punished for that. And we'll uh, focus on that uh, in a little bit. And we also offer financial empowerment resources to help support uh, your financial health, um, including providing uh, free tax prep services. So uh, just as a reminder to everyone, uh, the deadline to file your taxes is April 18th. Um, and if you do qualify, please make sure uh, you schedule an appointment with one of our uh, 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 the tax uh, providers. So within DCWP, our Office of Labor Policy and Standards, um, that is OLPS, uh, we lead the nation on advocacy around the importance of municipal workplace rights um, and protections. And we also enforce and implement and uh, work on the development of a new generation of um, minimum labor standards for, uh, for, uh, for New York City's workers. Um, as of last year, we, uh, create, uh, we, we rolled out uh, uh, laws with regards to delivery workers and third-party apps. So uh, there are a number of different uh, workplace laws that we work on as well. So we also dedicate, we are a dedicated voice in city government for workers in New York City, and we protect and promote these labor standards and policies that create fair workplaces to ensure that all workers can realize their uh, their rights, regardless of their immigration status. So in terms of enforcement, um, there are key uh, workplace laws uh, and rules um, that we enforce. So we will be discussing uh, paid safe and sick leave today. Um, we also enforce the Fair Work Week law, uh, Freelance Isn't Free Act, which we will uh, highlight as well, uh, Commuter Benefits Laws, Grocery Worker Retention Act, um, living and prevailing wages, uh, wage laws, and temporary schedule change law, which we will also be focusing on today. Um, in terms of outreach and education, we educate workers as well as employers and the general public about local, state, and federal workplace protections. And we partner with uh, workers and worker organizations to ensure that workers know their rights and can advocate for them. And we educate employers as well uh, about their obligations under these uh, workers' right laws to build a culture of compliance. So within um, our paid care division uh, of OLPS, uh, we have a first of its kind uh, division uh, dedicated to defending the rights of paid care workers, such as home health and uh, personal care aides, home attendants, nannies, caregivers, house cleaners, and to improve uh, their quality of uh, the paid care jobs that they do and strengthening the paid care system. Uh, we also take complaints uh, and uh, refer uh, complaints as necessary. So we take complaints about workplace laws and investi investigate claims uh, under these laws that we enforce. So such as the paid safe and sick leave law, um, for other issues, we connect workers to relevant government agencies, uh, legal service providers, and resources to help them uh, access and protect their rights uh, and, and get the critical services that they would need. And lastly, with our uh, research uh, advocacy and, and uh, policy development, um, we conduct labor market research to advance these uh, new policy initiatives that are responsive to uh, a changing economy and help strengthen the protections for particularly vulnerable workers, including people of color, uh, women, and immigrants. So 
as I mentioned, uh, these are the workplace laws that uh, that we enforce, and I will explain a little bit more about how uh, the paid safe and uh, about uh, the paid safe and sick leave law, the Freelances and Free Act, and the temporary change uh, uh, temporary schedule change law. So, with regards to uh, the paid safe and sick leave, um, so if you are a part time or full time worker. Uh, at a business of any size or nonprofit uh, in New York City, or, or um, you work in a New York City home uh, as a domestic worker, you have the right to safe and sick leave to, to care for yourself or anyone that you would consider a family. And your employer is required to provide uh, you um, a written notice of your right to safe and sick leave. Um, and we have that information on our website. Um, so that would be nyc.gov forward slash workers. But also in the chat, I will share with you all a link um, to information with regards to uh, paid safe and sick leave. But specifically when you use, you're use you using safe and, uh, and sick leave, um, you're using it uh, for your, your health, including to get medical care, um, or to recover from an uh, illness or injury. This can also be applied to a, for a family member who is uh, sick or has a medical appointment. Um, and you would find more information on our website as far as uh, who would constitute as a family member. But um, you would, could also apply uh, this uh, leave to uh, your job or your, your child's school uh, as it closes due to a public health emergency. And you, you can utilize this uh, for uh, your safety or the safety of a family member uh, as it relates to uh, domestic violence, un unwanted sexual contact, uh, stalking, or human trafficking. Um, and the amount of uh, safe and sick leave that's available to you uh, can vary depending on the number of employees employed by this employer or uh, the um, employer's annual income. Um, so here on this table, um, if you work for an employer and there's uh, the total number of em uh, employees employed by this employer is one through four, and the employer's annual income uh, is less than a million dollars, you would be allowed uh, up to 40 hours of unpaid leave. However, that changes if the employer's income is uh, over a, a million dollar or, or more where that changes to uh, up to 40 hours of paid leave. Um, and if an uh, employer is, uh, the number of employees is, uh, or it would be five or more, or if you are uh, in a, dom a domestic worker, for example, then you would also receive up to 40 hours of paid leave. And if the number of employees uh, uh, that's employed by this employer uh, is, over a hundred, then uh, that uh, the amount of paid leave per calendar year would be increased up to uh, 56 hours as opposed to 40 hours. Um, with regards to our freelance uh, isn't free act. Um, so a freelance worker is uh, any individual that's hired or retained uh, as an independent contractor by a hiring party um, to provide uh, uh, services for compensation. So if you are a freelance worker, you have uh, rights. So as your rights relate to a written contract, so all contracts that are worth uh, $800 or more um, must be in writing. So that uh, this would include all agreements between you and the hiring party that total $800 in any uh, 120 day period. Uh, and this written contract must spell out uh, the work uh, that you will perform, the pay for the work, and the date that you get paid. And you and the hiring party must uh, keep a copy of this written contract. Uh, on our website, um, which I will share in the chat as well, uh, we have a... Just bear with me. We have a model of this... Uh, uh, of this contract that uh, is just uh, to give uh, uh, freelancers an idea. So the, of the terms that would be required under the law and the optional terms that may apply uh, depending on the different work type and ar arrangements. So 
we just want to make sure that uh, I, that uh, New Yorkers understand that everything that is included in a contract and uh, we suggest consulting uh, either an attorney or a workers' right advocate. Um, if you have any questions about what should be included or what a specific term may mean. Um, in terms of your rights uh, to timely payment, so the hiring party must pay you for all uh, completed work and you must receive payment on or before the date that is uh, in the contract. And if a contract does not include a payment date, the hiring party must uh, pay you within 30 days uh, after uh, completing, uh, after you complete the work. Next, I wanna highlight um, freedom from retaliation. So it is uh, illegal uh, for a hiring party to penalize, threaten, blacklist, or otherwise deter workers from exercising their rights under the Freelances and Free Act. Denying a worker future work and threatening to take unwarranted uh, legal action against a worker is also uh, illegal. And you can file a complaint uh, with our Office of the Labor Policy and Standards regarding this retaliation by submitting a complaint form that you can find on our website. And there's also the right to file a complaint um, aside from uh, retaliation. So, uh, when you file a complaint with uh, our Office of Labor Policy and Standards, uh, they'll notify the hiring party who must respond to the complaint within 20 days. Um, so OLPS will also provide information to help you find a lawyer and understand the legal process and more. Um, and if you have any questions, we have a dedicated email uh, at uh, freelancers at uh, DCA. Uh, .nyc.gov. And I also wanted to uh, focus on our uh, temporary change law today, um, excuse me, temporary schedule change law, where employees have a right to tempor uh, temporary schedule changes um, to, to their uh, work schedule uh, for certain professional, uh, excuse me, certain personal events. And this can include uh, short-term unpaid leave, paid time off, uh, working remotely, or swapping uh, or shifting uh, work hours. And to share with everyone that's participating today, I also have, um, we'll share in the chat the link to uh, the page specific to uh, to this uh, law here. So in terms of what uh, a personal event uh, would, uh, or what would qualify as a personal event. So um, the need to provide care for a child that's under the age of 18, or the need to provide care for a care recipient. So a per that would be a person with uh, disability who is a family or household member and relies on the employee for medical care or to meet uh, the need of daily living. Um, the need to attend a legal proceeding or public uh, hearing for public benefits to which the employee, a family member or employee's um, uh, uh, child uh, or care recipient is a party of. And any other uh, reason which uh, the employee may use uh, leave under New York City's paid safe and sick leave law. So when uh, requesting a schedule change, you can request uh, two changes annually to accommodate a personal event, or you can request uh, two separate changes, uh, each totaling one business day, or one change for up to two business days. And in terms of the types of uh, temporary changes, um, you can propose the type of change, uh, temporary change you would like. Um, your employer must approve uh, your proposal or provide uh, pay without leave. So your, I also wanna note that your employer may not require you to use leave under uh, New York City's paid safe and sick leave law. 
for a temporary schedule change. Um, and your employer may offer you the choice to use uh, paid time off as well. So uh, those are just uh, a, a, an overview of the laws that uh, the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection uh, um, provides with regards to uh, uh, workers. Um, so if you have any sp uh, questions, you can re definitely reach out to us at 311 um, or highlight, uh, uh, or if you have any concerns or, or need further details, um, I would suggest visiting the web pages that I shared uh, as it relates to paid safe and sick leave, uh, the Freelances and Free Act, and the temporary schedule change laws. Um, for uh, You can also email our uh, Office of Labor Policy and Standards as well uh, if you have any specific concerns or complaints um, that you may want to address. Um, so I'm just going to stop sharing here, and we're happy to take any questions that uh, folks may have as it relates to um, any of the laws that I mentioned today. Jose, if you're on, um, yeah, I'm not seeing any uh, questions in the Q&A, but I'm happy to, if anyone wants to participate. Uh... Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, no, I'm not seeing any questions myself. I'm just wondering if you can reiterate um, if there's just a sort of single landing place or um, contact mm -hmm. uh, where folks can reach out to if they have questions or um you know need additional guidance or anything like that so i'm sharing in the chat so uh nyc.gov forward slash workers is our general landing page for all the uh, laws um that we cover here at dcwp um and there's also additional resources for workers as well um should there be uh, any question arise but to uh reiterate if there are any complaints that um uh, should workplace complaints that arise, um, folks should email uh, OLPS at uh, dcwp.nyc.gov, and we're more than happy to look into any complaints that it should that that would arise and um, any concerns. Um, if it doesn't fall within our jurisdiction, we're more than happy to uh, uh, share uh, refer resources and uh, to other and refer cases to other uh, state or federal agencies uh, um, if, if that, if that, uh, that case uh, arises. But um, a lot of what we're seeing is uh, just uh, as it relates to paid safe and sick leave, which is really what we uh, focus on here. Great, thank That's, uh, I think, super helpful for folks to have that direct contact. Um, and for any additional questions related to the nightlife industry or working in nightlife, um, obviously folks can all, always contact uh, the Office of Nightlife at nightlife at media.nyc.gov. I've just put that into the chat again. Uh, so if there are no additional questions, um, I want to thank you, Ed, for um, taking the time to walk everybody through this really helpful information about you know, what their rights are and um, what the city uh, and specifically DCWP is is doing to make sure that, um, you know, folks can take advantage of, of those rights. And I also want to thank everyone for uh, attending today. We hope you've been able to take away some really helpful information um, and that you can take advantage of all the resources that are available to you. So again, as always, um, feel free to reach out to us with any other issues or questions uh, related to uh, working in nightlife or, or anything else uh, as it relates to the nightlife community. Um, and thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your afternoon.
and we'll leave the chat up for just another minute so folks can um, pull down um, any of those links or, or contact info as well. So thank you. <laughs>